Amy from Now Polish Baby 90 and welcome to today's video. So this is a little bit of a different video for you today. We went through a few months ago some articles about nail polishes and what ones were meant to be people's favourites and I was trying to think of a video that we could do and then this stumbled upon me. How to paint your nails, 20 nail painting tips. Yes. And this is Cosmopolitan's yes. top 20 tips for painting your nails. This article came out in the last six months and I just thought it'd be really fun to see if we can go through and see if I agree with any of the tips. Um, because I have browsed through and some of them I was a bit like, mm, I don't know if these are necessarily tips that you need to do. Some of them are a bit extra out there for people that are just doing a nice basic manicure. But we'll go through them, we'll see if we agree. On some of them it is recommending certain products. So I'm gonna recommend my favorites instead of what Cosmopolitan says. Uh, let's get going. Painting tip number one from them is you only need to apply in three strokes. Now I necessarily will agree with that. When you apply your nails they say normally that you should put your brush onto your fingertip. Now I say you don't want to go right to the cuticle immediately. You always want to push forward and then draw back. And the three stroke swipe method is something that's gone around for a long time on Instagram in the nail polish painting world where you kind of do one side, the other side and down the middle. And the least amount of backwards and forwards you can do will apply for a better a manicure um, having to rework the polishes whilst it's drying is never a good thing so I do agree that doing as minimal amount is, is the best. Number two they are saying is always use a base coat. Now I wouldn't necessarily agree that you need to always do a base coat because you don't always have time to use have a base coat. I would say if it's going to be a polish that might stain your nails like a teal, a yellow, a blue, um, even like a dark purple maybe definitely wear a base coat and I have two things I would say if you have if you want a base coat in your life, you need, in my opinion, two different types. Now these are by 90, other brands are available. Um, and what you need is really one that is more of a sticky base, or this one this one is called Stuck by 90. So one that's gonna dry very clear and that's something that's gonna uh, absorb the colour and make it stick to it. So there's um Orly has does Orly have one that's called sticky base coat? You need some sort of base coat that's gonna be clear, sticky in texture. So that one is the 90 one. Then you also might need a ridge filling base coat and this one is super smooth by 90 and this is going to dry a little bit uh, with an, a little bit of an opacity to it um, and it is going to fill out those ridges and any um, bumpiness that you may have in your nails. So I think it is great to have those two options depending on how your nails are, depending on the seasons. Mine obviously are a lot more broken and brittle during the winter and then I would might slap on um, some of like a thicker ridge filling base coat just to smooth it all out but I would say having one of each of that sort of type is a good way forward. Nail painting tip number three is don't forget a top coat. 100% I would agree that a lot of polishes need a top coat on them just to smooth it all out to make it all shiny whether you want to go for a matte top coat or a shiny top coat. My favourite top coat of life is this one and this one is the Rimmel Finishing Touch Ultra Shine Top Coat. I've been using this for years, it's really great because you can pick it up very easily. A lot of supermarkets over in the UK have a Rimmel stand in them and it's £5 and I love it. Tip number four is clean your edges. Now it depends what your technique is like when you apply nail polish. Um, I would say that you're gonna uh, improve over time. So when you first start painting your nails, yes, you're gonna flood your cuticles, yes, you're gonna get it on your skin. It's just one of those things that happens. And on the flip side, if you're somebody that does a lot of nail art, you may want to use some sort of latex barrier around the edge, or you may want to use a clean up. Now, you can just go for getting um, an old lip brush, is their um, suggestion, and some nail polish removal or acetone, or there is some products out there on the market like this one, which are the kit all ready to go for you. So this is by Leighton Denny, and this is their Precision Precision Corrector Fluid. And if you open it up there, we have the little brush and the um, formula. So you're never gonna use this all up, but I just really liked how the brush and the um, pretty much straight up acetone comes with it together. And this is, if I'm gonna use something, I'm gonna use this just because I know that it comes in the box, you've got the brush, and the liquid all there together. So again, it depends. You might not need this over time on the normal. I don't need to do cleanup, but it's something that is already out there for you if you feel like you might need one. The next tip is to find a good white. Now one, white manicures look great, but also I would agree and disagree that you need to find the right white and the right black because you need um, maybe like a base color, for other manicures. So some really good whites. The first one is um, a Sally Hansen Insta Dry and this is just in white. This is really good because it's super opaque in one coat and in my opinion if you're going to be using the white or the black as a base um, you want it to be opaque in one coat where you can. So that is a good one. 
You can also use stamping polishes as great base colours, and I think this is something that I don't hear enough of. Um, so I have here the Twinkle Tea White, and this is called um, Glow Up. It's a really thick white polish, it's great for stamping, and it's also great if you just need a white base. So those would be my favourite whites. My favourite black of all time actually isn't around anymore. This is by Models Own, and this is their shade um, Hyper Gel Jet Black. Um, this doesn't exist anymore, so I don't know what I'm going to do when this bottle is gone, but this is a great, was a great black. Um, and again, probably Sally Hansen probably have a black, and Twinkle Tea probably have a black. So like I say, just try and find some a nice, good one coat of black and white um, because that's kind of an essential in your collection. Tip six is skip quick dry polish. Um, they're saying on here that the formulas are usually loaded with harsh chemicals which will weaken your nails. Now, I can't speak from a scientist's point of view. I know that some fast dry top coats that exist, I'm thinking mainly of Sesh Feet, do have a warning on them that says they shouldn't be used by pregnant women. However, the one that I have, where is it gone? The um, Rimmel one that is my favourite is a fast dry top coat and in my opinion if I use a top coat that is not quick drying they never dry at all. So I think I'm thinking of like the OPI just normal top coat. Uh, I've tried a Sally Hansen one that's just a, just, a, just a not a fast dry and they never dry. So that, that's your own opinion on that. For me it's quick dry all the time or nothing at all but obviously on here there may be some health properties that you may want to avoid in the quick dry ones. Number seven is use cuticle oil. I absolutely agree that cuticle oil is a great thing to strengthen your nails and the skin around it. And sometimes I just take my nail polish off and then just have cuticle oil and cream slathered on there. My cuticle oil at the moment is the um, one by Lily Ann's Garden, which is an independent brand company. And this was a butterbeer scented one for all you Harry Potter fans out there. This one is in a roller ball. She can get it off. And it's just really nice and moisturising and hydrating. So definitely finding some sort of cuticle oil that you want in your life is a must. Number eight is drying your nails with cold water. Now I actually saw this tip years and years ago. My sister-in-law was at some point a, be a trained beautician. And I remember her when she had my nephew painting her nails really quick and then dunking them into water. Now I don't know what the entire logic of it is. So we're saying we, we paint on... So Cosmopolitan is saying we paint them with a non fast drying top coat and then we just dip them in water I don't know what the science is I'm sure there's a video out there for you that want to try that out but that's not something that I'm going to be promoting to you guys number nine is when you wear neons make sure you ground them so they're saying put an opaque white base on to then put neons over the top if you're in the nail polish community you will know that this is a bit of a controversial subject some people believe that neon should be neon without a white base and that does exist in the world i'm thinking of the nine zero neons that came out um, a little while ago last year i think neons to me i am in the agreement that a neon should be neon without a white base but then if you followed the earlier tip of having a white base you already have one ready for if the fact that you need them but to me they shouldn't need it sound off in the comments tip number 10 is thinning out your polish now when i first read that i was like what does this mean? But reading into the text, it says, you know that thick and gloopy nail polish sitting in your cabinet is actually salvageable. So from that point of view, yes, if you didn't know that nail polish thinner was a thing, it is most certainly a thing. This is the OPI one. It's the only one that I've ever used, so I can only tell you that this one works. I know from just being in the community that a lot of people really like the Orly one, but I presume they all work just as well as another. So if you have older polish and you want to thin it out, this is great. It revitalizes things and go from there. However, I know some people like to thin them immediately as they get them. So I have two thoughts, agree and disagree. The first one is that polish shouldn't really be that thick that you need to thin it when you first get it because it should obviously, to me, polish is going to get thicker over time. So makers, if anything, should make it on the slightly thinner side of things. But then also I have a personal preference that I quite like thicker polishes, not thick where it's unmanageable but I'd rather do two thicker coats than three thin so I guess if someone got a thicker polish and they prefer thin you could thin it out I would just say to use this as a last resort I don't like the idea of mixing with the chemistry of the nail polish by chucking this in unless it's necessary so when you can use it too haphazardly I don't know if that would then affect the longevity of the polish as in the first time you open your polish, you're putting thinner in. I don't know how that would min mix with the chemistry. That's my only thought on it. But if you didn't know it exists, it definitely does exist. And you should probably get some nail polish thinner in your life if you're a 
big a person with a big collection like I am because not every polish can be worn all the time. Number 11 is use only three coats. Now this is my golden rule. I never do more than three coats of nail polish. Not for any reason they're listing here about things becoming thick and gloopy. Just on the principle that upon every polish in my opinion should be opaque in three coats. Am I right? 12 is store your nail polish wisely. Now they're saying here to store your nail polish in the fridge. I don't think they have a fridge big enough for my collection. I'm dubious on that one, um, but if you have a spare fridge to put your nail polish in, go ahead. Number 13 is don't cut your cuticles. Now this is, uh, a, again, a long-standing thing. You shouldn't cut a live skin around your nails, even if it doesn't look great. You should just try and hydrate it and do all that sort of stuff instead. So I do agree with that one. And it rolls nicely into tip 14, which is to clip your hang nails. And this is with cuticle nippers. You can get these from Sally's. This has been my only pair I've ever used. And this is for trimming, um, like they say, hang nails or dry dead skin, nothing alive. Say it with me, cutting the dry skin only. Tip number 15 is file carefully. Now this is my nail file of life and this is the Black Beauty by The Edge Nails. You can get these on Amazon, I believe in a, like a multi-pack, um, but having a good nail file for you, I can't advise you on that in a way because some people want a really strong gritted one, someone will want something that is very, very fine, like a glass nail file. But for me, this is the Black Beauty and this is the perfect perfect grain of nail file to me anyway. Tip number 16 is don't shake your nail polish bottles. They're saying instead of shaking your pot bottle, hold it vertically and roll it back and forth. Now, they're saying this ensures there's no um, air bubbles in the lacquer. Um, and I've seen that a lot and I tend to do that if I'm in videos, I will do one of these instead of a shake. And also with the, bo the balls in there, I do feel like you get a bit of a better shake with doing this sort of motion. I don't know if there's a policing to it that you shouldn't ever shake them and you should only do that. But I will admit that I tend to do this. I think it's quite satisfying to do that, to be honest. That's why I'm doing it. Tip number 17 is use non-acetone remover. For me, my favourite nail polish remover is the Zoya Plus remover. I buy one of these and it lasts me just under a year, about nine, ten months. And then you can also get it in the little flip to push it up. And this is really great because it removes it as if it is just an acetone only remover. And the reason why I used acetone only removers for such a long time is because they remove your nail polish in a flash. So the Zoya one is great because it removes your polish quickly, but it keeps your nails healthy. So that would be my advice when it comes to remover. Number 18 is stay away from hot water. Now I actually was going to bring this up in another video because um, I always find if I have a glitter dense polish on or something that I know is going to be super scrubby, my big tip to remove it is to soak your hands in hot water. If I have a bath, I know my nail polish is going to pop right off my nails. So it's a tip to, it's like a tip for both. If you do want them to come off, soak them in hot water. If you don't, avoid hot water. Number 19 is go for glitter. And again, I agree with this one. They're saying that it is a good option to put glitter on a manicure to make it last longer. So you might wear a couple of days of a cream finish and then you slap on a glitter to give it some extra long wear. So I would have definitely agree with that tip. And the last tip is a bit of a weird one again. This one is soak before removing. So they're saying that you should get a cotton wool ball and soak it in, acid, in a nail polish remover and put it over over your nails. Now I would say that this would only be something that I would do for glitter. It does mention in part of the blurb about doing it for glitter but it doesn't say that in the tip. So that is definitely a good idea if you want to get rid of glitters like I say or you can just soak them in warm water. But if you're removing glitter I would say soak but if I'm saying remove a cream I would say don't soak. Soak or not to soak? That is the question. So those are Cosmopolitan's top 20 tips for a perfect manicure. Do you agree? On the whole I would say most of them have a like a little bit of truth in them and definitely something that you can build on and adapt in your own way like I showed you with the different products that I personally like to use. Let me know down below what your thoughts are on their top tips and if you would add any or remove any, let me know. Thumbs up, subscribe and I will see you soon.